Hi, this is Devon Dames from Devon Dames International, where we discuss all things business and all things trading. Before we get started, I would like to open with a disclaimer in that this is for educational purposes only. There are no endorsements of any kind backing me. This is all of my own personal experience, and I present it here today for you. Thank you. Today, I wanted to go over the screen selections as it relates to how we have our screen mounted behind me and what that actually means when I actually say let's go to monitor one two through six and I wanted to go through those because one of the questions that we have that's coming in is asking us how can they get this very same setup so that they can trade the very same way well for starters screen one two three and four, all of those are trade stations. Screen five and six, they are child swap. So when I say I'm monitoring in monitor one, what I'm looking at is 12 companies showing an advanced stock screener highlighted by money coming in versus money coming out. So it gives a clear indication of where, where the money flow is going over a broader spectrum of the market. For screen number two, it is an advanced indicator that tells me where not only where money is coming in over a long period of time, but it breaks down three timelines of long-term, intermediate, and short-term that allows me to either place a trade and s feel comfortable in my very own skin as to what that trade is like screen number three is my radar screen so I use this for finding companies that are moving and I get an opportunity to see where money is going screen four is the same one as screen number one whereby I'm able to look at 12 companies so in total I can see between screen one and screen four a total of 24 companies now screen five we go back to Charles Schwab, and I use that for my candlestick viewing. So candlesticks viewing in three time frames, and the time frames that I'm currently using right now is the 10 minute, the one day, and the one week. I can add another one in, but it's redundant to add them in because our, our holding patterns are, are so short. Just like screen three, which shows the radar screen in trade station, I'm able to see a similar look with different scenarios on there for Charles Swap. So I kind of sort of picked the best out of both brokerage houses and I planted them here over six screens so that I can manipulate the position or protect my position the best way I know how. Good morning my fellow traders out there. This morning is August 8th and today we're going to take some other looks at what it looks like in the candlestick and what it looks like in the child swap trading windows and get a good comparison of how to visualize the movement of price and how we want to behave in those patterns so let's go over to our monitor and look over at the nation of stocks that we looked at so if you were following my videos you know that this is screen number one and this one observes approximately 12 stocks now we can tell based on this movement that which one had the longest movement here EQT let's bring that up to full view and we can tell that from July 14th they've been in declining motion ever since so this would not be a stock that I would be looking at going long in we can view EQT in one of the other windows and I'll show you how that is done and let me bring up right now I'm looking at Netflix but let's go to EQT I do have a position on Netflix and our position just to give others an idea that our position in, Net in Netflix right now is producing, we have 100 shares, and it's produced about $674.
We have another position in PKG, and that's producing $34. And we have another position in TRGP, which produced uh, roughly about 390, between 390 and 400. So with that said, let's go take a look at our EQT. For starters, we can see that money has been coming out of this thing in this direction. This window here is indicating that we have been losing value since the 14th. And now, and that's last month since the 14th. And now we're on the 8th. So this would not be a good stock to purchase. Not a good, not a good buy signal. However, if we look over here on the momentum bar, we can tell that around this time things change. And as you can see, the momentum has switched. From here, it's showing that the momentum had switched from about the 12th of July. So based on the momentum switching from the 12th of July, we know we should have not have been long in this stock. And there again, you look at it in another time frame. Now, as we can tell from about the 11th, we had a massive drop here. So shorting this stock would have been a good sign for us anywhere between 76.88 and 75.32. And right now it's currently trading at approximately $70.28. So we'd have made some money in shorting this. But we would have had to short and wait a while. Some of the questions that we have gotten recently was based on looking at the candlesticks and comparing it to our trade station advance window. So if we go over to our monitor five. This is Netflix again, but let me bring up EQT. And for all of those of you who were following, you would know that this is my daily window. I have it in a 10 minute range right now and I've switched it to get a little clear, little more clarity on the daily momentum. So I've switched each bar here to represent 10 minutes. This is the daily chart for me. And this is the weekly chart. What I normally have is a three setup similar to this, and I normally have the dailies, weeklies, and monthlies. But since the monthlies are so far out, and I'm operating only in the moments these days, I'm keeping it to the, I've changed it to include the 10 minute. So each bar on here represents a 10 minute progression. And as we can tell from our stock indicator here, which this is considered the MACD histogram here. And our black line here is considered our rate of change. And our red line here is considered the MACD straight line. And then we simply have a, another MACD indicator, with, which is an exponential indicator. So this would move a lot faster than the straight line. So when the exponential indicator crosses the straight line or linear indicator, then we know that this would be a buying opportunity. But as we can tell, based on EQT over the past few days, from July to now, it's been in a downward motion. So this would not be a good stock to start accumulating, even though it's positive on the week. Now for most people, I understand that that looking at the candlesticks can be extremely difficult. And if you're not getting your view in a candlestick format like this one, you actually can switch it. Let's go to the graphs type for file swap. And we can pick our style. And we actually can go to Mount. I like Mountain every now and then. Because Mountain gives you a better graph sometimes of where the values and peaks are. 
And that's pretty much all you want, but you get it in a one-line graph form instead of trying to understand, okay, is the stock losing value or is it gaining value? So I do like this momentum sometimes, but sometimes it's difficult to see whether a stock is increasing or decreasing. So the difference between candlesticks and having a mountain view, you can change those things real easily. So we can go back to the trade station camp and see exactly what we were talking about. So yes, this thing is still declining, even though we have <clears throat> change here. We hadn't noticed significant change to change our position if we were short in EQT. And there again, for the most part, EQT we can get some more information on it if we like. We simply would have to go over to our child swap screen, screen number six, and make certain that let's bring up EQT. EQT. Now, if you scroll across the lines, notice the description, notice the average one month volume. And all of these things are telling me that this company is liquid enough that we can trade it if we like. But there again, I wouldn't be caught long in this one at this particular time. So let's go over and see what the researchers say about EQT. Ah, their opinion is to avoid this thing at all cost. This thing was downgraded. And this opinion was form 8-8. So they just formed this opinion today, ladies and gentlemen, today. And it states here that this stock is a short candidate. If you are long, close position or monitor stock closely. Wow, what a great recommendation. I like that idea. So if I wouldn't be caught long in this stock, you shouldn't be caught long either. However... If I'm going to take a position in this stock, I would take a very, very small short size to the tune of maybe 50 shares or even less than that to confirm the move. Now, that's all we wanted to share in terms of understanding what it means to look at a candlestick from Charles Schwab and to look at the advance graph within TradeStation. I get a better view within my trade station advance graphs because I can understand it a lot better. Candlesticks, even though I've been trading a while, is still a little difficult for me to understand. And if you want to see, let's, we can also take a look at some of the movements that I have going on right now in Netflix, which is profitable for me. So I guess I should point out a couple of things here to you. Let's go back to monitor six so we can see what's going on here. The Dow Jones is negative 15. The NASDAQ is negative 8 at this time. And the S&P is negative 0.92. Now, today it looking like a negative day. And I am long Netflix and I am long in two other companies. But I didn't get out. Why didn't I get out? Well, the reason I didn't get out is because of these indicators. Two, three, long window. Let's go to our monitor four. So let's bring up our Netflix. Netflix <clears throat> had a poor guidance last week, and they dropped value significantly. So I kind of sort of picked them up here around 87, 84, and I'm watching this thing climb up. So as I watch this thing climb up, no significant changes had occurred in Netflix that states I should get out of this particular stock at this particular time. So I'm not getting out until they take me out. But there again, I do have a protective measure on this stock. Should this stock go below, let's say, 10% of this value, which is, let's say, about 8 bucks. This thing drops below $80. I am out of it, regardless of what's happening. 
So I generally keep my trailing stops on about 10%. And I know we didn't get into trailing stops yet, but the trailing stops is at, as the higher of this thing goes up, if it drops 10% at its high range, then it would kick me out. So I'm waiting for this thing to take off like a rocket, get up to about 130. And if it drops 10% after 130 and come down $13 to about 117, then that would be a good exit strategy for me, should we get up there. So now the other position I have is PKG. So I've been sitting in this thing for a little bit, and it's producing some capital, but it isn't moving as fast. So I may just take this off because the frequency of, of climbing is not climbing as fast as I want it to. So within this thing, I should have been... Um, well, obviously, I should have gotten in down here at $65. But I watched it and watched it and just was not patient enough to wait it through. So here I am now, and I got in a little late. But at the same token, I, did, I don't want this uh, stock to cascade on me. So the minute I see this thing breaks a red barrier in here at 7438 or something along those lines, I'll probably get out with a little profit. Not much, but a little. Because it just doesn't move fast. And the other position that I'm in is TRGP. And I found this company um, probably last week sometime. Um, let's say somewhere around the 4th. And <clears throat> I kind of like them because they were hitting my signals off the chart in terms of volume and price. And I've, let's see exactly if we can get some information on TRGP for you. And if you can tell, I like to go to, to the um, Charles Schwab research because they, they wrap it all up in one page for me. So this opinion is to avoid this stock. And this opinion came approximately last month on the 25th, which is fine. Stock is a short candidate. If you are long, close position or monitor stock closely. So they were indicating this to be a short. And I saw an opportunity whereby I was able to take advantage of it from the long side. So I did. Now, it's not for everybody. I monitor, I monitor my stocks closely. But we can actually go up to with the advantage, advantage windows are showing us. So based on these screens here, of course, as we can tell, this is hitting the higher ranges of the Bollinger Band, and each block is showing growth in terms of money coming in. The same thing for the oscillators here, starting from the time that I've acquired somewhere around here at 38.52, and it's now giving us a range of 42.17. So it's climbing in the right direction. Uh, but there again, this could change. So even though the market at large is trending negatively, it's not giving me an indication to get out. In order for me to get out, they're going to have to kick me out of here, which is great because I am profitable, and there are things that we can do on the equity side, um, to prevent further losses should this thing reverse on itself and changes to go the other way. So we will hang out in this in these three stocks for a little bit. Um, I may get out of PKG um, probably by the end of the week or going into next week if they don't start moving faster in a direction that I think. But there again, the market, even though all three indicators are negative on the day, we can then we can then say that's not enough of an indicator for us to get out of our position. Here's the Dow Jones, the S and P, and the Nasdaq. So and we can we can balloon these up into higher amounts to show that the Nasdaq right now is trending positively, but it's also at the top of his range too. So it's at the top of the range for the year. And as you can tell, we had a huge 
landslide prior to February's volatile mo movements. And then after February, we went up all the way to May. And then July, I guess, we isolate, oscillated in a range and came down in July, and then we bounced back up. So we got to understand these movements and what it means for us in order to profit from not only these movements, but just profit in general so that we can take advantage of certain movements. So the S&P, you'd realize that all of them would give a similar pattern, meaning all of them should be trading at the top of their ranges right now. So if they're all trading at the top of their ranges, technically speaking, we can either break this range a little later, and there are other tools that we can use, such as uh, Fibonacci and all of that other good stuff. But I don't really like Fib Fibonacci. I like to see the money coming in and out. I like to see green on, as it goes up and red. When I see red, I start to protect myself. So I look for positions to protect myself. I try to find out where money is moving, and I try to show myself either the protective measure of hedging or reducing share sizes in order. And that's the strategy that I use. Uh, well, one of them anyhow. And there again, this is the NASDAQ. And as we can tell, they're also trading at the top of their range. And they also had a very similar move between February and Mar May and coming back down to July. So they all follow one another. But I like to, I like to see all three of them on my windows so that I can get a great opportunity of moving forward in that space and see exactly what it's like. So this is Devon Dames trading live on... August 8th. So we'll try to have some more recordings as the requests are coming in. And um, keep sending your questions in. So that's the difference today. We wanted to go over what it means to trade and see what the candlesticks are like. And I'll show you that view again. We go back to style. Now let's do the candlesticks. This is my 10 minute window. And as we can tell, this sometimes can be confusing. So let's look at this window. And now let's look at this window. So this is the movement of today. So from the 8th, we can tell that money was coming into this stock. And it hadn't yet taken a negative dive. And this is minute by minute, folks, this particular window. And this is the Renko window with TradeStation. And this window, you can, you can alternate to accommodate exactly what you want to see. So from the third, they bought the, the eighth month, the third date, they bought them out at somewhere around 35, 65. And they've never looked back since. So these are the stocks, and now I've I've gotten a little late, which is uh, thirty eight forty five. But nonetheless, I didn't allow this red move here or this negative move to shake me out. So, so sometimes you got to stay into a stock in order to understand exactly um, its particular direction. But there again, you got to protect yourself as much as you possibly can because this is real capital that you're playing with. To all of those individuals looking for companies to trade. The next video that we take would be understanding how to find companies. How to find companies. And I've covered some of it, I'm certain, but that window, just to give you a teaser, there again, we'll go to our trial swap. And when we bring up our high lows, I have this parameter set here for a very specific reason in terms of looking for stocks without me scarrowing or locating stocks in the stock market. I, I have this set up with a certain setup that I like. And as you can tell, I can look at SLW here on their daily count is 81. That may be something that I want to take a look at. Um, X-ray is trending negatively. 
on the daily. So that's something that I can take a look at. So all of these are indicators here that help you in allowing you to understand um, where money is moving and matriculating to. So we will cover in our next video some of the high-low indicators within Charles Schwab and how we can cross-reference that with TradeStation to make an educated understanding of investing. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Our time is up for today, and thank you for sharing in this space, and keep your questions coming. It was a pleasure being with you today.